Here we have our L298N H-Bridge motor driver and we've got it connected up to two DC motors. We have a 9 volt power supply here and so we've got our 9 volt power supply powering up the module here and if you're running a, a power supply that is under 12 volts you can also power the uh, Arduino device from this power supply here because it will output a 5 volt power supply as well. Um, the board itself has here the voltage regulator here. So you've got your uh, voltage in, your ground, and your voltage out, your 5 volts out. We've got our logic pins here, so our two PWM pins here and here and we've got our uh, terminal blocks for the motor so motor motor one and motor two and over here we have our L298N H bridge which has a decent heat sink attached to it so if I put a um, a multimeter on here we can see that we have got we've got just under eight volts going in from our nine volt power supply and you can see we've got five volts coming out that we could use to power our Arduino Uno here uh, but in this case I've got the Arduino Uno powered from the computer USB port so because I'm powering for the, uh, from the USB on the computer, I don't want to attach the uh, 5 volts out to my Arduino. Um, so what you would do is, if you weren't using the USB from your computer, you would take the 5 volts out from the module and put it into the V in on the Arduino to power the Arduino up, like so. But in this case, I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use the uh, USB on the computer. Okay, so let's have a look at this in action. Okay, so here is the code that we're going to run for this sketch. And so at the top here, we define each of the commands. So we've got the go left, go right, go forward, go back and stop. And the associated character uh, that is is matching each of those commands under that we assign our pins so we've got the ENA pin so that's the enable pin so that that one's the pulse width modulation and the two pins that will open the um, and close the gates on on one of the H bridges for one motor and then for motor two the enable pin here for the pulse width modulation pin is number five and then the two pins that will open and close the, the other H bridge for that motor underneath. Uh, and then underneath that, in our setup, we want each of those pins to be an output. So we declare each of them as an output. And then we start serial communication. And then under that, we have a few different functions each one dedicated to a direction of our motors so we've got all off and you can see here that for all off all of those pins are set to low and then for forward with we've, we've got for each group we've got a high and a low okay so if you notice we've got all low here but you never have a case where all the pins are high and I'll show you why in just a minute so then we've got go backward and so that would be the reverse of the forward position and then left and right where one motor would be going one way and the other motor going another way so I'll just show you what is um, going on with that so if we look at this diagram here so here we have our H bridge for one motor and the H bridge for the second motor. And you can see with our uh, all off function here, we've got all the pins set to low. 
So each of those gates are open and there's no current flowing through the H-bridge. And then when we have our um, forward uh, position, we have one gate cl closed on one, so two, two sets of gates on a diagonal closed and two sets on the diagonal open so that the current flows one way. So in this case, the motor running clockwise and this motor running clockwise and that will set the direction to forward and then for the backwards we have it running in the reverse direction and then for left one is running one way so in this case anti-clockwise and this one running clockwise so we have the vehicle turning left and then for right it is the reverse of that so going back to the code again underneath those um, functions there we have our loop and in the loop we are using an if statement here so to listen for the serial monitor so if the serial is available so if there's anything coming through on the serial port um, what we're looking for is a um, a character so we set up this um, variable here to capture that character so it will read the character in from the serial port and if you remember going back up to the top any of those characters we set up in our define here so a d w s and x if one of those characters pops up via the serial port then we we'll use this switch statement to then run one of these functions so in the case of a w coming up then we run this go forward and the speed would be set at 255 which is full 255 here for backwards and then we've got 150 for right and left and of course we've got a zero for all off um, so that's the code let's let's run um, run that code okay, open up our serial monitor and then we can type our commands Okay, so let's run some commands through our Arduino IDE serial monitor and see what happens. So that's forward, stop, backward, stop, left, stop, right, and stop. And here we have the keys L298N motor shield. So this one stacks directly on top of the Arduino Uno. And what I've got here, I've got it connected up to two DC motors once again. Um, with this one, this shield comes with a few um, output plugs here. So we've got from D two up to d7 here so each of these uh, plugs here has the digital pin plus a ground pin plus the um, voltage pin so that's the uh, five volts voltage from the um, arduino board um, and on the other side we have the analog pin so from analog zero up to analog five same thing so the analog pin plus voltage and ground as well. Uh, we also have on here um, the I2C and the UART um, plugs too. So you can communicate um, with other devices. So you can stack other devices and, and run um, communication across those other devices if you wanted to. Uh, once again, here we have our L298N with a heat sink attached to it as well. So let's have a look and see how this one runs. So forward, back, left, and right. One thing to take note of, if you are powering your Arduino Uno from your uh, computer's USB port, 
then make sure that you take off the um, the VCC 5 volt jumper here. So you only want to put that on when you're um, disconnected from the uh, computer's USB port. So if you're going to use this, say, to power a robot or something, obviously you won't be powering from the um, computer's uh, USB port. You'll just be running off a, a battery pack, so you can place the jumper back on in that case. But when you've got USB on, just make sure you take that off. And here we have the Adafruit Motor Shield version 2. Um, this is a pretty good shield if you're um, using motors that are under a certain um, size and a power supply under a certain voltage um, because you can easily incorporate other motors like stepper motors and a servo motor and this one comes with its own library that is written to make um, the running of these motors altogether uh, a lot easier. So this is how this one runs. This is running the um, example sketch from the Adafruit Motor Shield library, which is called Motor Party. 